Gabriel Bondage is here. Gonna start out with uh, some live music. Got it all figured out what you're doing? Well, yeah. more or less. More or less. <laughs> <laughs> These things aren't off the album. We're playing something different. Okay. Fine. This is a song called Learning. Why don't, uh, just so, so that the listeners can tell who's who, why don't you introduce yourselves so that they know whose voice belongs to whom, and then you can say what instrument you're playing. My name is Rex, and I'm playing this. <laughs> okay. I'm uh, Levy Bonacki, and I'm playing guitar. Bill Wisniewski, flute. All right. How did how'd you get a name like Gabriel Bondage? <laughs> Oh, wow, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> You've been asked that before. Yeah. 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 Um, well, there's another uh, group called Gabriel on uh, A&M A &M records. records, is yeah. it? Yeah. Just yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we didn't want any confusion, so we added, added bondage. It seems to fit anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You're from around here? Yeah, yes. we're from Chicago. Been playing around a lot and... Well, we just started this month. Yeah, uh, lately. Playing. Uh huh. We did it kind of backwards. We did the recording first, and then started to play. How long had you been together before you did the recording? Mm. <laughs> well, well, part of the band, see, we went through a lot of personnel changes, and the uh, the nucleus of the band has been together about three years. How many more are there of you, other than the three of you? There's three uh, more. six. Six all together. All together. Yeah. So what instruments are, are there that we, that we don't have here? Well, Dave Verba is on keyboards, synthesizer, string ensemble, organ. Zato Cruz plays drums, a little bit of guitar and some background vocals. And uh, Tony Stram on bass. And, We're, and background vocals. And background vocals. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you record the album? Uh, Castle in uh, uh, Lake Geneva, oh. Castle Studios. Is that a nice studio? Yeah, we liked we it a lot. So. It was real comfortable. Had you record? Had any of you recorded before? No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but we don't like to talk about 
boy, now I want to talk about it. <laughs> Back in the, the bubblegum era, I did a, a 45. I was 17, I think, 16 or 17. And it was a, appropriately a disaster. It's <laughs> really bad. We sold about 200 copies of it. Uh huh. Yeah. And was that. Was that around here? Was that like a local? It sold locally? Or? It's, it's, it's sold locally. Were. It's, just, uh, <laughs> it's sold to my relatives. Yeah. Records. So what are you going to do now? Are you going to you have like a? Are, is the album being distributed nationwide? Or you gonna, Semi nationwide. <laughs> so in the Midwest mainly. mainly. Are you doing tours like around the Midwest, or are you just? Uh, starting in January, uh, we're gonna, we're playing around the city the rest of the, uh, December. And uh, in January, we're going on the road to Michigan and those cold places. <laughs> you playing anywhere near here soon? You yeah, were playing the Camel's Hump tonight. Uh huh. And uh, Hanover Park. Yeah, that's nearby. We'll be at beginning the 30th, and uh, we're at Vibes in Chicago every Monday and Tuesday of December. Where's Where's Vibes? On Lincoln, Lincoln Avenue. Avenue. Lincoln. Right, 251 oh. North Lincoln, I think. One of those places. Oh, right, yeah, right in there. Want to do something else? Conglomerate? Yeah, sure. if I can remember the words to it. <laughs> this thing is called Long Time. Clap yourselves and sound like a bigger crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sounds kind of strange having just a couple of couple of claps there. <laughs> Who writes most of the music? Uh, well, we all write. We all do a lot of writing. In fact, on the next album, instead of uh, 
just me. There's going to be uh, some songs written exclusively by Larry. It's a, 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 a classical piece for guitar, flute, and violin that he'll be doing, and Bill writes, and me. A drummer writes, too. Okay. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Hey, okay. Rex has done what? most of the writing up to this point, though. So. Not your turn. You can say something. <laughs> <Yeah>. Feel free <laughs> to just well, to hop in there anytime. I was just looking at this. Uh, a bio? Is that what you call a yeah. bio here? <laughs> Starts out with a thing about uh, Chicago musical environment over the years. Blah, 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 about uh, how people are always moving to the coast to get a break. Yeah, is we'll that, probably do that too. No, we can't. <laughs> is that really we can't true? We can't afford it. We can't to afford it. <laughs> What uh, trucks cost a lot of money. <laughs> what could be better about the Chicago musical environment, is from your point of view, in regard in relationship to uh, the the coast? Well, just how how could how the Chicago be better? better? What would what would the differences be if it were going to be a? Well, I think people if if people it's more of a thing where if people decided to come and listen to music instead of going to pick up chicks or getting yeah. drunk that type of thing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it'd be better it, if they start paying more attention to uh, original music. Then Chicago could be as big or bigger than than L.A. I think. None of us have been to California for very long, but it seems like they're they're listening hammers are a little freer. You know, they're not afraid to go into a place to hear a group that's doing original material. And it seems like Chicago, for most of the places that you can play, they expect to hear you doing what's ever. The top, top 40, 40 yeah. you know. Even even a lot of original groups have to do copy uh, some copy material in order to work. Uh -huh. And uh, play the requests. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And so far we haven't had to do that and we're not planning on it. So we'll just wait and see what happens. You don't run into much trouble people yelling boogie and stuff. No. Well, we no. do a few no. boogie tunes too. Yes. So it, uh -huh. It's not all like the this. The things that we just <laughs> did isn't exactly representative of you know what we do live with the full band. Uh -huh. So we, we get into some pretty hard things, too, but I don't know. There's even some disco music. <laughs> <laughs> What's, disco music? What's disco music? I always music? wondered what, what, yeah. what makes it, what we're, makes we're it the, fun in disco. Gotta have a we're the lead singer, we're the lead singer with no shirt on gets up and says, Everybody clap your hands! Yeah. <laughs> and then you go on just as normal, right? Yeah. You're going to, are you uh, planning on releasing any singles? You gotta... Off the second album, we're planning some singles off of there. Uh -huh. Not off the first one, at this point anyway. Our uh, producer's talking about something that's really interesting too, about doing some completely experimental singles, just to see what the reaction would be. Nobody's ever really tried to do that before. Uh -huh. Just go completely experimental on a 45. There's a lot of uh, so-called progressive stations too that look at a single a little more seriously. Like if something's released on a single, then they'll concentrate on that that cut from the album lots of times and then you get more exposure and people recognize you and yeah. associate you with something. There's, they're playing, uh, uh, a lot of stations are playing, concentrating on, on material that is not representative of the band at all, you know, and people come to see us and they go, you know, wow, <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's, 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 what are you doing? <laughs> So what are uh, what are some cuts that are representative of the band that are on the album that was right here a minute ago and should be somewhere near? Uh, what are some representative cuts and we'll we'll do a, a couple of commercials and then we'll we'll play a representative cut. I think, ladies and gentlemen, is pretty representative. I like that one myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you get a little and, bit of uh, a different idea from everybody. Bondage is pretty representative because it's sort of experimental, you know, it's not your standard tune. Well, in other words, what Bill's trying to say is they're all representative if you play them all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <we> right. <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's do a couple of these commercials here before we get too far behind. Gotta pay the bills. And then we'll play uh, Ladies and Gentlemen. The Likely Story has done it again. They've come up with some really superb musical entertainment for you this weekend. This Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, The Likely Story presents Chameleon in concert. And that's not all. Get ready now to attend The Likely Story's New Year's Eve extravaganza. The New Year's Eve party is just $15 a couple or $8 per person. And Yancey Derringer, along with Buster, will be the featured performers. The Likely Story at 54 South Broadway in Aurora. What's up, Doc? Is the program about 
Records, Warner Brothers Records, new Warner Brothers Records. It's presented on Sunday nights on the Fox by Warner Brothers Records. Might want to check that out some evening. Something from the album Angel Dust by Gabriel Bondage. Down by the river While the moon is overhead Look down into the darkness there Try to think of what he said Does the color the river while the moon is overhead look down into the darkness there try to think of what he said Tune called uh, "Ladies and Gentlemen" from Gabriel Bondage's uh, "Angel Dust" LP. He said that the uh, that whole side is like a concept side. What's the concept? Well, the concept is uh, the beginning of creation up to this point, and then take it from there. So uh, we got uh, rust flakes, dinosaur, and implosion. Mm -hmm. What's an implosion? 
implosion is an inward explosion. Oh, it is? Yeah. It really is. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> an inward explosion. Yeah. Should we uh, talk about the cut some more or play it and then talk about it? or? Well, do you have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Let's listen to it and then come up with a question. <laughs> All right, this is, uh, hopefully, uh, this will be bondage when we turn this little pot up. Bondage. Actually, it's called a whole bunch of things. Let me get this out here. <laughs> Rust Flakes Dinosaur and Implosion from Gabriel Bondage here, uh, Angel Dust LP. Uh, let, let, we'll get we'll get a couple more commercials out of the way here, and then get back into into some more talk and live music. Sports fans arise. Make your Christmas list at the Ski Rack in Geneva. And if you're buying the gift for a sports, you can see Tom Waits uh, not only the 17th, but the 18th, 19th, 20th, and 21st. Tom Waits' album is available at Johnny Be Good, Sounds Good on Broadway in Chicago, Sound Source in Oak Park, Slip Disc in Evanston, and you can register to win free tickets to the Tom Waits concert. Speaking of concerts, Gabriel Bondage will be at uh, Camel Sump tonight and also on the 23rd. What day of the week is that? Tuesday. Another weekday. Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. All right. You're going to be there tonight, though. I heard some mention about two shows. Two shows tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe what, even what? three. <laughs> <laughs> what are, What are the What are the times for the two shows? And will they just be repeats? Will the second one be a repeat of the first one? No. no. Yeah, two different shows. Two shows, separate and distinct. So someone could go there and catch them both and have all new stuff. Yeah. Right? yeah. Sit through both. And have a few extra drinks. <laughs> We uh, always likes that. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking about the contrast between uh, the album and what you're doing live. Of course, it's probably because you just have a few, half of your group here. But uh, also, we're talking about uh, when this album was recorded last last winter, right? Right. And you've got and into the spring. Into the spring. We finished it in April. Long process. Did you start working on the next album as soon as you were done with this one? Um, started thinking about getting material for the second album, but we haven't actually started work in the studio yet on the second album. What? Uh, how do you start getting the material together? You just sort of... Uh, write it. You just write it. <laughs> <laughs> do you write it when you're all together, yeah. or do you...? Well, an individual usually will come in with an idea, or a com either a complete idea or a partial idea, and if it's a complete idea, everybody just does what he wants. Might come in with a partial mm -hmm. idea, though, and you just kind of all work it out. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, it's happened a couple times. It doesn't happen very often. What kind of place do you practice in? I've known a lot of groups of. Well, we've been in every off the wall practice. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> Particularly My basement's not off the wall. We've been thrown out of the best basements in the city. <laughs> <laughs> but we have a real nice studio basement built in, a studio built in the basement now. Ah, ah. Is uh, the next album going to be much like this one? Completely different. Completely different. Completely different. Completely different. Well,. <laughs> no, it's going to be completely different, really, really. 
How? There's wait and see. It will. It will be completely different. Is it? Uh, how? How is it going to be different? How will it be then? Will it be a di whole different concept? Or uh, well, lately we've noticed that our that our writing has been turning uh, a little bit more commercial than than our, our past things, and we're going to uh, concentrate on some of that and also some some of our really heavy things. Uh, <laughs> Modesty will get you nowhere. Yeah, I, I said the word heavy, and I just thought of Jeff and Ernst again. <laughs> <laughs> we might mention that Jeff and Ernst are going to be at the Camel Sump, too, tonight. Yeah, Isn't that, that right? That's good that's news. Yeah, gonna, huh. yeah. That's good news. I really enjoy them. Yeah. It's so good to have a couple laughs between sets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it helps. You going to do some more music? Yeah. Now? Okay. We'd like to do a song called Gabriel. Big crowd then. How do you uh, how do you put your shows together? How do you mix in the uh, you do mix in the acoustic with the non-acoustic, right? It depends on the audience a lot. If the audience is is especially receptive, then then we do our acoustic sets, and if not, uh, we do a little anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little instead of a Just lot. Just a though. little, right? Yeah. right. What do you what do you think you'll be doing tonight? Uh, Does the first set generally? Uh, is the first set generally different than the second set? I mean, is the first set generally more acoustic or the second set generally more acoustic? Or The second set is generally more acoustic. I think we come on a little stronger on the first set. A lot stronger. But then at the end of the second set, we come on strong again to, you know, ah. back to where we started. It Grand finale. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. Well, we've got, uh, got another cut from the album lined up. The uh, You and the Wind cut. Which you said was. Uh, why don't you explain the, the uh, comparison that you came up with before about that uh, jungle line tune by Joni Mitchell? Well, the only reason that it reminds me of of Joni Mitchell's jungle line is because uh, the eerie effect of uh, 
she uses the jungle drums as a texture like and it, it gives it an, uh, an ominous feeling and uh, uh, ours doesn't give you an ominous feeling it gives you a feeling in the other direction but it's still uh, pretty spacey because it's completely separated from the music and it's called you and the wind <laughs> Oh, man. 